Hey, Eagle fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome to Fiddle V Eagles Now. Mailbag time here on the weekend. First, though, you guys follow me on Twitter. You should be following me on Twitter. I'm trying to get, uh, let's do 20 new follows based on this video. At Real Thomas Mott is my Twitter handle. Yes, you got, you know, complaints about my answers or my discussions here on the channel, or you want to praise my thoughts, DM me. I'll answer as many DMs as I can this weekend. Give me one right now on Twitter. Got to follow me first, at Real Thomas Mott. All right, as I said, mailbag time. Plenty of uh, questions that get submitted to the Eagle channel here on Philadelphia Eagles now every single day, every single week. And so we pick through the best six, seven, or maybe even eight, and we'll dive into my thoughts and my answers. Start with Matthew Z says, uh, what would the fan base view as a stupid move at six? Move uh, more towards taking a position that is not a need, not like a bad player, but what can you say? Um... You know, I think a stupid move at number six would be offensive line. I'm thinking Penny Sewell or, or Penny Sewell, as every say is his name over there, the Oregon offensive tackle, Rayshon Slater out of Northwestern. I think the Eagles do not need offensive line, offensive tackle specifically at number six overall. There are a lot of other positions of need that are way more important. I mean, we can get behind cornerback. We can get behind linebacker. We all want wide receiver, but all three of those make a ton of sense, whereas offensive lineman, in my opinion, really doesn't. That doesn't mean that Sewell's a bad player. He might be the best player in this draft. I mean, he is a great left tackle. They just don't need need somebody, and they don't need an offensive lineman that early in the draft. I mean, look at the, look, look, the depth chart speaks for itself, right? You have a great right side of the offensive line, especially when healthy, and it will be. Brandon Brooks, Lane Johnson, that, I mean, as good as it gets on the right side. Kelsey looks like he's going to go ahead and come back for one more year. He's widely considered one of the best centers in the National Football League. Sayamalu is a highly underrated left guard, and I think he honestly proved that this past season when he was out, and they were inserting Irving or other people in there at left guard. I mean, he's really, really good. And then the main point here is left tackle. I think they're set at left tackle. You can either roll with Andre Dillard, a former first-round draft pick who, you know, has been iffy in limited playing time, but that's the thing, limited playing time. First-round draft pick for a reason. If he's your backup, you're doing pretty well. He can swing over a right tackle if he needs to. And then, of course, the main starter, who I think is going to be the breakout candidate of the year for the Eagles, and really was this past year, Jordan Mailata. I mean, the guy was absolutely fantastic during the starts at left tackle to the point that the Eagles eventually inserted him as the starting left tackle over Jason Peters because Mailata is such a beast. I think he's going to turn into one of the best left tackles in the league he already is a good left tackle. Can he become a great left tackle? So even though Sewell is, I think, a better left tackle than both Dillard and Mylotta, and you can make the argument that the Eagles just want to go and bolster the O-line, just take him at six, get the best O-lineman possible, I think that would be a very, um, not stupid move, but a disappointing move for a fan base that knows, and I think we all can understand, like I said, wide receiver, cornerback, linebacker are way bigger needs than, of course, going ahead and drafting an offensive lineman. Now, later on the draft, get linemen. That's fine. not saying they don't need to go ahead and get one. I've said before, it is a need of theirs. But at six, I think the fan base would not be happy with a uh, an offensive line move overall. What do you guys think? Pin comment down below. What's the biggest draft need the Eagles have right now? I said, I, I mean, the, the big three is wide receiver, corner, or linebacker. It's more which of those do you think is the biggest draft need? I keep saying wide receiver. Other people say linebacker, corner, whatever it is. Go down below with the uh, pin comment and give me your Eagles biggest wider or biggest I should say draft need overall let's move into another comment here Addy says I think the Eagles should trade back in the draft and get pits then sign a receiver in free agency first off in terms of free agency no I mean I I, I, don't, I don't think they're gonna have the money to go ahead and sign a free agent wide receiver they're probably gonna lose a couple of their in-house wide receivers Sean Jackson Alshon Jeffrey we talked about that in terms of uh what to do at number six so I guess what you're essentially asking is what if the receivers aren't there because there's no way the Eagles would take Kyle Pitts over let's say Jamar Chase or Devontae Smith however let's say this happens right Smith goes uh, Tr uh, Trevor Lawrence goes one. The Jets take a wide receiver, Devontae Smith two. Dolphins go Jamar Chase, or you go vice versa there, but both receivers are gone. Falcons at four take Justin Fields, and the Bengals take Panay Sewell at number five. What would you do if you're Philadelphia? Personally, I'd take Patrick Sertan or, of course, the linebacker Micah Parsons. However, I could see them trading back in this scenario and going for maybe like a Jalen Waddell uh, over a guy like Kyle Pitts. Personally, like, I I I'm not high on Kyle Pitts. That's not saying Kyle Pitts is bad. He's the best tight end we've probably seen in my lifetime coming out of the NFL draft. I'm not high on him going to Philadelphia. People are like in love with Kyle Pitts and they envision him as like the next Rob Gronkowski or the next Travis Kelsey or George Kittle. And those are good players and important players. And I think tight end's an important position. The Eagles just kind of have tight end figured out. Even if they trade Zach Ertz, I think Dallas Goddard can be the tight end of the future. I would trade back and take Waddle over Pitts. I would trade back and take Micah Parsons over Pitts. I'm not against trading back. I just think at number six, you're going to have a chance to get one of the best players available in one of the three big positions of need that we just mentioned. If the two receivers are gone, then you go ahead and just take Patrick Sertan in the corner. If Sertan is gone and both receivers are gone, you take Micah Parsons. If Parsons and Sertan are both gone, you take Devontae Smith or Jamar Chase. Being at six means it's very, very easy because the odds of all four 
of the top guys, whether it's Smith, Chase, uh, Parsons, or Sertan, the odds of all four of them being gone by six to me are very, very slim because you figure at least two quarterbacks are going to be gone by that time in terms of the... Uh, in terms of just the way the draft is set up right now. So I'm not anti-Pitts. I see a lot of questions like, why do you hate Kyle Pitts? Like, he's really great. You think he sucks? No, I think he's great. Just Philadelphia doesn't need him, especially in the first round. If you trade back, you get a different wide receiver, whether it's Jalen Waddle or somebody else, or you go corner because there's a bunch of them you can take early on in the first round. Okay, make sure you guys are subscribed. We did a great uh, mock draft video just a couple of days ago where I put together what I think is like the best case scenario for an Eagles seven-round mock draft. That was like two days ago. Thumbnail you see on your screen right now. And we're going to do plenty more draft videos. I'll take a deep dive into the wide receiver spot, deep dive into multiple positions that the Eagles have, obviously, of need, and give you some names that you can look out for, not only in the first round, but later rounds as well. And as we said, plenty more mock drafts in the future, so make sure you guys are subscribed. Hit the big red subscribe button and hit the notification bell as well. Matthew says, the Eagles do trade back and get Julian Waddle. I think he has the same speed he had when he didn't have the broken ankle. I think Miles Sanders is going to be the best uh, running. I guess best running back is probably what we're saying right there. Like I, okay, so first off, like I just said, if you were to trade back and you need a wide receiver, Waddle's going to be the pick. I can see Philadelphia going from like 6 to 9, 6 to 12, and getting additional draft compensation and still getting Jalen Waddle, who honestly at one point was considered the best wide receiver in this draft until the ankle injury. Everything I have read, I did some research on this, is that the ankle is essentially 100% healed. I mean, he was able to play a couple of snaps in the national championship game, despite the fact that doctors told him not to, but he was that far along in his rehab that he was able to go ahead and do it without having significant long-term risk. Again, I, I understand people being worried about the ankle. The Eagles have a habit of drafting injured players who eventually get drafted again, and it's like, can you just take a healthy guy? But most good players have had some sort of weird injury issue in the past. I have no concerns with, with Waddle. I wouldn't take him at six, as I said, so I'd rather have Sertan or uh, Micah Parsons in terms of better overall future superstar. But if you came back a little bit and got more draft compensation and went ahead and got a guy like Jen Waddle at 12 or 15 or 9, I would be 100% okay with that. In terms of Miles Sanders, Sanders is, is a legit number one running back. I mean, the, the question here is, is he going to be the best running back in the league, best running back on the Eagles? I mean, easily on the Eagles, I think he's going to have another breakout year, and he will be... A top five running back, one, if you can just stay healthy, and that's been a problem of his the past couple of years. And two, the offensive line stays healthy. You got to remember, in 2017, the Eagle O line stayed healthy, minus, of course, the injury to Jason Peters. And of course, Halapulviati Vitae played very well in the playoff run. But that offensive line not only protects well, it makes massive running lanes. And Sanders was seventh in all NFL players, including quarterbacks, in yards per carry last year. He had more like 5.3 yards per carry. And that will only improve if he has the starting offensive line in front of him. I think this is a guaranteed 1,000 yard running back as long as there are no injuries. However, I have said in the past that I wouldn't mind adding another running back, whether that's in the draft or free agency, if you can afford one in free agency, because Eagles, you know, money's a, a, a big issue. But if you had someone to go and spell Miles Sanders just a little bit, I mean, in my mock draft, I got Chuba Hubbard in the fifth round, which is a little bit late. I think you'd get him, I'll have to get him earlier, but mix him in there over Boston Scott, even though I love Boston Scott, would be a good, uh, um, I think help for a guy like Miles Sanders, take a little pressure off of him as clearly a feature back right now in Philadelphia. You guys agree though, right? Like thumbs up, Miles Sanders, 100% a 1,000 back at 1,000 yard back in 2021, right? Like, I mean, is there any debate there? I don't think so. I think 1,000 yard back is 100%. Give the video a thumbs up if you guys agree with me on that. <coughs> Excuse me. 76 second DB says, what about John Hightower and Quez Watkins? You know, I, I remember whenever they drafted these guys in, on, on day three, like fifth round and sixth round last year, and I said, one of them is going to turn out to be pretty decent. You, got, I think, they, they, you remember me saying that? I was like, this is great. You take multiple chances in a later round, boom or bust, but the odds of one of them being good is is, is at least a decent pro probability. And the problem is you sort of throw the stats up, neither were. I mean, Watkins had more injuries, only played in six games, flashed a couple of decent end arounds. He had the one touchdown uh, catch as well, but neither of them really did anything. And I think that was just a tribute to the fact that they weren't really great prospects to begin with. And, you know, the eagle wide receiver issues, the quarterback issues were all there. I think they still have possibility and potential. Whenever you have speed, as both of them do, you can win in the National Football League. They need to have a big offseason, though, because if they, you know, don't produce in training camp and into preseason and the regular season... The odds of the Eagles having, you know, fresh talent, fresh blood at wide receiver, especially at number six overall, means they're going to lose more opportunities at snaps because I think Fulgham gets more snaps. I think they bring back Greg Ward. He gets a lot of snaps. Rager, obviously, a lot of snaps. And then Waddle or Chase or, or Devontae Smith. So uh, I'm not confident. I'm not. I'm, I'm literally not going to sit back and say, well, one of them is going to be good this year. I think I was wrong about that in the draft, and I will admit it. I hope one of them can. I think if they do, it's just a bonus icing on the cake, but I would not put any sort of hope or... Um, 
like real excitement into Hightower Watkins because they did nothing last year and they were both, I mean, really, really bad from a wide receiver standpoint. Who's better though? I mean, I, I, I think it's John Hightower, even though he dropped a lot of passes last year. Is, there, is one better than the other? What do you guys think? If you had to pick, type JH down below for John Hightower, type QW down below for um, uh, to go ahead and uh, pick Quez Watkins. I'm curious if you have like a preference over which one could be better than the other. Um, let's see here. Cecil Burr, why do you constantly say, consistently say, you want to keep healthy Deshaun Jackson? That player does not exist. It's literally impossible for him to stay healthy for a season. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, yes, over the past couple of years, he has not been healthy. But if he could, and that's why I always say if, because it's not a guarantee, if he could stay healthy, I would love Deshaun Jackson. But like you said, he can't. So, I mean... I don't know, what, 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 do you want, what, what do you want me to say here? You're right. He can't stay healthy. I should not talk about Deshaun Jackson. But as I keep saying, if he could somehow stay healthy, he would be a very good wide receiver. And that is not really a controversial thing to say. I mean, I agree. He hasn't been healthy. And that's that's kind of been a problem for Philadelphia. And it really has been a problem for the Eagles, the wide receiver, the past couple of years. All right, moving on to our bet us uh, promo code right now i keep getting dm'd about this asking to go ahead and throw it up so i'll throw it up right here chessports.com forward slash eagles bet is the place to go to go ahead and sign up to bet on other things besides the national football league or maybe bet on some uh, you know draft odds or free agency odds or trade odds there are plenty of great opportunities to uh, you know do some sports betting and win some money as well our promo code is eagles125 and right now the current odds for wins next team are i think they're interesting you win some money on this so the bears are the favorites right now that was the rumor this past week and obviously at this point of filming nothing's happened on that. Colts plus 150. Eagles to stay. You know, it could happen. Plus 175. What about Denver? Plus 700. They just cut A.J. Bouye. Maybe they're creating a little bit of uh, cap space to go ahead and go after a quarterback. You never know. They don't feel very uh, locked in on Drew Locke, if you will. And then, of course, Washington. I don't think Washington. I wouldn't bet on Washington. But all these other ones can bet and win some money. Chatsports.com forward slash Eagles bet. Promo code Eagles125. And that gets you the 125% deposit bonus whenever you first sign up. So go ahead and bet on that right now. All right. Two, uh, let's do one more here. Tron says, think the Eagles should draft Micah Parsons. He wouldn't install fear in opposing offenses for years. Um, yeah, I mean, I listen, I would like Micah Parsons. I wouldn't like him over a Devontae Smith or Jamar Chase or even a Patrick Sertan, but I would like, uh, I mean, I listen, I would really like Micah Parsons. As I said earlier, I would trade back for Micah Parsons. If you're sitting there at six and both wide receivers are gone and Patrick Sertan is gone as well, or maybe you don't think quarterback's a big need, maybe both receivers are gone, Sertan and Parsons are there, and Denver wants to come up at 10 or the Niners want to come up at number 12 to get a quarterback or the Patriots at 15, I think you could go back to 8, 9, 10, 12, 15 and probably still get get Sertan or Parsons, and that would be, to me, a great move. If you were able to go from, let's say, 6 to 12, you get an additional first in 2022, plus maybe a second or a third, and you still got My Micah Parsons, fantastic. I'm all for that. I mean, this guy, everybody keeps saying is going to be a top linebacker in the league, and you got to go back to, I mean, whenever the uh, the Bucks drafted Devin White at number five overall, and look what he did in the Super Bowl. I mean, the guy was a monster this year. If you had Devin White on Philadelphia, and that's what Micah Parsons' uh, comparison is, I mean... How much better is the defense as a whole? He was a huge impact in the Bucks win over the, over the Chiefs in the Super Bowl, and I would love that in Philadelphia. Okay, before we go ahead and end again, follow me on Twitter, at RealThomasMott, the place to go. And not only should you follow me, because I tweet a bunch of Eagles-related stuff, but you can DM me your questions, and I will answer your questions. And that's what we do here. So go ahead and follow me on Twitter, at RealThomasMott. DM me. I'll answer some questions this weekend while I'm uh, you know, hanging out and uh, enjoying a rainy Atlanta weekend as it is right now here in the city of Atlanta. Okay. It's man for today here on Philadelphia Eagles now. Let's enjoy this mailbag. I'm your host, Thomas Mott, signing off. Have a great weekend. See you guys next week for some more Eagle news and rumors.